Welcome everyone to our episode of Milk Minutes presented to you by Healthy Starts Center for Urban Breastfeeding. I will be your host tonight. My name is Ashley Hall and I'm the program manager of the Center for Urban Breastfeeding, affectionately known as the CUB. The Center for Urban Breastfeeding is a Healthy Start initiative to address and bridge the gap of breastfeeding initiation for Black mothers and Black babies. Our free services are specifically targeted to Black mothers residing in Allegheny County. Our services include telephone, virtual, and in-home support. For access to lactation professionals through our latch line, simply call 412-545-2022 and press option 1. You will be connected to lactation professionals within the first 20 minutes. We offer, excuse me, we also offer the Breastfeeding 101 class where we get our families prepared to breastfeed successfully. In this class, you get to know the process of how breast milk is made, how to maintain your supply, and when you should reach out for help. I'm excited to share that this year we are launching our Pump, Pump, Pump It Up class. Mm -hmm. In this class, we prepare our families for their pump journey and also what that looks like going back to work. We also offer monthly education through Milk Minutes where we discuss breastfeeding topics. In celebration of Black Breastfeeding Week and the 10th anniversary of the Pittsburgh Black Breastfeeding Circle, also known as PBBC, we are highlighting the amazing work of PBBC with our special guest, Ngozi Doreen D. Tibbs, MHP, IBCLC, CHC, PN1, LU, Zumba, is a nationally recognized speaker and educator on cultural humility, diversity, childbirth education, lactation, and health equity. She has a bachelor's degree in maternal child health and a master's degree in public health. In addition, Ngozi is a doula, a childbirth educator, and trainer. She is an international board-certified lactation consultant, plus co-founder of the Pittsburgh Black Breastfeeding Circle, and part of the team who designed the first, excuse me, who designed the new awesome 45-hour foundational breastfeeding training called the Black Course. Ngozi loves learning and also looks for ways to expand her expertise. As a result, she has also completed evidence-based certifications in health and nutrition from Precision Nutrition and the American Council on Exercise. Plus, she is proud to be a loveologist, master sex expert, and relationship coach through Loveology University. She recently completed her cert- certification as a Zumba instructor for children and adults. Ngazi is also an, in- an ordained wedding officiant and offers relationship coaching for engaged couples. She is passionate about deep health, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, first for the Black family and then for all families. Welcome tonight, our guest, Ngazi. How are you today? I'm feeling pretty good. I apologize that the sun is is beaming a little too bright. I hope you can see me well. Yeah. I'm, I'm welcome the sun though, especially because it's a little cooler today. Yes, yes. On days like this, we definitely need to embrace all the sunlight we can get. Yes, yes. So jumping right in, I want to just discuss all of your amazing work that you've done over the past 10 years. Now, in celebration with... a uh, excuse me, in celebration of Black Breastfeeding Week. Also, you're celebrating your 10-year anniversary for PBBC, correct? Yes, this is pretty exciting. This is really exciting. And when we started the PBBC, I actually had a dream that year, which was also the same year that I was graduating with my MPH. Oh, wow. But in my dream, I was feeling pretty wiped out, but I felt like this wonderful certification that I had as an international board certified lactation consultant, I needed to expand my reach. 
And I really learned from working at a hospital for several years that Black women were not getting the breastfeeding support that they wanted or deserved. So I said, I need to be the change that we seek. I can't keep expecting everyone else to do the work. I'm equipped and I need to do the work. However, I was exhausted <laughs> after finishing my MPH, but I knew that I couldn't be tired for long because there was work to be done in my community. And so we reached out to some folks, but more importantly, in August of that year, Becca Zayla, I got to give her a shout out. She reached out to me as a community activist in the city of Pittsburgh and surrounding areas. She said, we need to celebrate Black Breastfeeding Week. She didn't know anything about the dream that I had. So Becca Zayla said, will you come and just share with the people about breastfeeding and how to support Black women in the community? And so we had our meeting the last week in August of 2014. And when I look at that picture, there were dozens of people in this picture. I look at that now and I say that was really the unofficial start of the Black Breastfeeding Circle because our first meeting was in October of that year. Becca Zayla and I talked and said, we need to do more. We shouldn't have to just wait and celebrate every year. We need to have more meetings. So our first official meeting was in October of that year. And so we're excited that we've been able to sustain ourselves over 10 years. But I got to tell you, we had no money and you can't bring mamas and babies together and not feed the people. Absolutely. So we went into our pockets and we found money to buy sandwiches and fruit and drinks for families. But then Becca Zayla, because she's so awesome, she reached out to different community restaurants. One of them was Salem. So shout out to Salem's. They've been down with us from the beginning. They provided food to us at no cost. Wow. They said, feed the mamas and the babies good food. And we did chicken and rice and vegetables and bread. And that's what it was about. And so as months went on, we said, we are grateful for Salimas, but we need some more help. And we started meeting once a month which was great. We met at our local library. So we were also promoting literacy, reading to our babies, as well as promoting breastfeeding. So that was great. We were still going in our pockets, still getting money when we could from restaurants and other folks. But guess what? Someone shared with us about an organization that was providing money to organizations that provide uh, support for health and nutrition. And so we reached out, we were able to have a fiscal agent and the midwife center, we got to shout them out because they were there for us. They told us about the grant. We got the grant, it was $7,000. We were able to feed people, not just once a month, every week. That's and amazing. then provide professional support for leadership in the group because Becca Zayla and I understood that as two people, for a group that was growing and growing, which was a good problem to have, that we needed to also train some more leaders in the circle. So we did that too. And then there's more. We are grateful for Healthy Start because together with Healthy Start and the Cub, we were able to join forces as sister organizations and become a part of a uh, Center for Disease Control grant with the Allegheny County Health Department and other folks in the community that were concerned about some of the health disparities for health and nutrition. And so we are now with the CDC for our second grant. We had a first five-year grant. Now we're into our second round of a five-year grant. So we are growing by leaps and bounds and we are so incredibly excited. We're equally excited here too. And listening to your story, it's amazing that it all started with a dream and how quickly you were able to get support and also a community. Support. Like you said, feeding mamas and babies is important. Being able to meet in spaces that are uh, that accommodate moms is very important too. Now, thinking back to that original dream that you had and, and 10 years ago, how has PDBC evolved over the years? Good question. So we had just started with Becca Zayla and I as, as leadership. And, you know, 
I consider Becca Zeta like a local celebrity, right? So the fact that we had her in leadership for the time that we did, we are incredibly grateful. But Becca Zayla also knew that although she was a part of this leadership team and dream, there were some other things that she wanted to continue to focus on. And she did that. And so she moved away from us, but not too far. She was always close by. And so some other leaders in the community said, hey, we would like to join arms with you and continue to grow this circle. And so we did. So I want to give a shout out to Robin and Amber because they were there from the beginning and we were able to grow the group. But one of the challenges, though, is for people that work full time, how do you make space for your family as well as the additional work that you want to do? So that was one of the biggest challenges is that folks wanted to be involved, but they recognized that they didn't have a lot of time on their schedule because of their family and work needs to really um, lend to the circle. So that's probably one of our biggest challenges is really providing space for leadership to grow. But with that grant money, we were able to provide a little bit of a stipend. So that was helpful too. Definitely. And then thinking about some of those challenges and, you know, I know personally that you're very flexible and that you're uh, willing to meet people at any time that that help that, that you're able to meet with them. Um, recently in the past, had there have you done anything as far as making accommodations to meet people non-traditionally or in, in spaces that are not um, often considered spaces for breastfeeding? Sure. I, I tell you, even though we experienced this, the pandemic, which was challenging for lots of families because many of us lost loved ones. Right. And when this, when we first started learning about this virus, we weren't sure exactly what was going on. Should you continue to breastfeed if you tested positive for COVID? There were all of these questions that were happening. Even our national, international leaders weren't sure what breastfeeding parents should do. And so we moved from meeting into the, the libraries and other places to 100% virtual. And so the benefit of that is that folks that were not able to come to our in-person meetings were able to get on a Zoom and able to join us and share with us like what was going on in their breastfeeding lives. So definitely having that virtual space I mean, we met on Zoom occasionally before the pandemic, but the pandemic really kind of forced us to pivot and think outside the box to make sure we could still provide breastfeeding education right. to the sisters in the community. But libraries were wonderful because we were also promoting literacy. So we got a chance to talk with the librarians about different books for young babies and toddlers. But then we also were able to meet at some community centers. So excuse me, one of our leaders in, in the circle has a space available. So we were able to meet there somewhere that was on the bus line. That was really helpful. So we would have time where we could talk about breastfeeding. We could have time where we could talk about parenting and relationships. All of those things affect breastfeeding. So we enjoyed those moments, but we also recognized that we wanted to go somewhere and just have fun. Right. We can talk about breastfeeding, but let's just go have fun. So we started meeting at the aviary, learning about different types of birds and what that means, learning about bird parents, right? right. You know, parent, you know, bird mamas, how do they take care of their babies? And we were able to bring our toddlers, our older kids. So now we're 10 years old. We've worked with families that have had babies every few years. So they're bringing their older kids and their younger kids. And that gave us an opportunity to just share in something that was fun. Absolutely. Going to picnics, eating outside together, taking walks together. In the beginning of the pandemic, we recognized that we still wanted to see each other. So we would have occasional times we would meet at Shanley Park and go take a walk. We'd wear our masks when we needed to. We would go to farmer's markets, talk about eating healthy fruits and veggies. Then we talk about, okay, for those of you that are on WIC, how do you incorporate WIC into a healthy diet? How do you eat healthy on a budget? We'd meet up at the Eastern Food Co-op and we had food bus, food vouchers where parents could get fresh fruits and veggies. So we were creative and understood that although breastfeeding is primarily about 
that lactating parent and the baby at their breast. Also, our families have families and older kids. So we want to talk about eating healthy on a budget. What does that mean as Black people who sometimes, due to systemic racism, we are at increased risk for all kinds of chronic issues? What do we have control over as breastfeeding parents? How can we start our, our babies off right with health and nutrition? So we've been able to touch on a few different things. And then, so bringing that other skill set in, we also talked about postpartum depression. We have some therapists in the circle that were talking with us about that and about depression in general. What does that look like for Black women? How do we say we need help when we need help? But then we also talked about healthy sexuality in our relationships. How can you still have a sex drive when you're a breastfeeding mom? We we got real deep into it. Yeah. We have midwives in the group. So we were able to talk about long-term reproductive health. So although our primary goal is that lactating parent and their baby, we also know that that breastfeeding parent is a part of a family. We want that breastfeeding mom to be healthy because healthy families make up healthy communities. Healthy communities make up a healthy society. So we're all about that healthy Black family, starting with that baby at their mother's breast. Absolutely. And I'm just sitting here just taking in everything that you said. Not only were you, not only does PBBC create a sense of community, create support, but also highlights the person's whole entire ecosystem and also the, the connection to community and the, the connection to the resources that are available, such as going to the aviary or even going to those libraries. It just really sounds that you've had a huge impact on the, the community. Now that we're sitting here reflecting on the 10 years, is there anything that you feel or better yet, how do you feel you've impacted the Black breastfeeding community? Good question as well. I feel often that I'm not doing enough personally, right? I feel like there's always more work to do. Absolutely. And when a mother comes back and says to me personally or the leadership team or just to all of us in the group, I would have quit had you not been here. That's when I feel like, okay, we are making a difference in our community, one breastfeeding family at a time. And so even though I always feel like I should be doing more personally, I should be doing more as a leader in this organization and co-founder, hearing those testimonies gives me encouragement that we are making a difference and that we got to keep going. Why? Because when a baby is at their mother's breast, we are reducing that lactating mother's risk of premenopausal breast cancer. We are reducing her risk of ovarian cancer, osteoporosis, even diabetes and heart disease. When a baby breastfeeds, we are reducing their risk of asthma, of certain types of cancers like leukemia. We are reducing that baby's risk of respiratory infections, which we know increased during, as we're going into the fall. So when we are supporting a breastfeeding family, we are supporting that family's health for the rest of their lives, Absolutely. for generations to come. And so the work that we do is important. And that's why I always feel like it's not enough because I recognize how important it is for generations. I also remind our sisters, our leadership and those that are members in the circle, when we bring our babies to the breast, we are healing the nation. There was a time when we were not allowed to feed our own babies. That's in our DNA. That stress and that trauma is there. When we are bringing the babies to our breasts, when no one is snatching them away from us and selling them off, we are healing our memories. We are healing our DNA. That's how important breastfeeding is. So we're not here to demonize formula. Formula is not evil. We understand that formula is there. If a mother needs it, we want her to feel comfortable using formula for supplemental feedings. Absolutely. But we also understand that that lactating parent's milk is tailor-made for her baby and changes daily according to her child's needs. You can't replace that. Mm -hmm. 
that's amazing. And we want our families to get a hold of how amazing their bodies are. Black women are so often told that our bodies are broken, it's not good enough, all of these things, but breastfeeding heals all of that trauma. And so that's why I'm so passionate about this work and passionate about training new folks to come in and replace me. So I can move aside and let younger women come. When I first started this work, we didn't have all the social media stuff. Right. So sometimes I feel like I'm catching up. I want to find out what the newest words are and all the rest of this. And so I don't want to be in the way of progress. And so I'm grateful for younger women walking alongside me. Give a shout out to Kelly and, and Ebony because they are my right-hand sisters. They are doing this work. And we have our other, our other leaders in the circle that are walking alongside Kelly and Ebony that are making a huge difference. Because you don't, you know, when an organization is really um, working to be effective, they have to have a succession plan. Absolutely. Right? If an organization is built around one person, if anything happens to that person, that organization fails. And then that impact is diminished. The work that we do is too important for it to be about me because this is about generational change. Absolutely. So I got to move out the way so that my sisters can do this work. I'll always be around. As long as God allows me to be around, I'll be around, but I can continue to move back so that these sisters can move forward. Absolutely. And you're speaking on um, so many points, but my, my main question right now is how can someone be involved with PPBC, whether they want to be a champion or are they looking for peer support? Absolutely. So we're pretty active on Facebook. We found that that was the easiest way on that social media platform. So you can, um, some people don't like Facebook, but I encourage you, even if you just get a Facebook page just to join the group, because daily we're sharing ideas, we're sharing recipes, talking about what's happening in the culture, right? So I would encourage you to join Facebook, but you can also call directly 412-638-1580. That is my direct number. You have any questions about how to join the group, how often we are going for outings, when our virtual um, meetups are, please reach out. Our website, has some basic stuff on there, but if you want to check it out, you can. There's some beautiful images, and it goes over how we got started, why we're here. But if you really want to know a little bit more about the day-to-day -day operations and how to get involved, please feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to provide all of that um, education for you, but also to link you with some of the leadership so that they can tell you what the day-to-day -day operations look like as well. Yes, thank you so much. And last but not least, this big celebration that we're having, where is it going to take place? When is it? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, it is at the Midwife Center. And I, I have been going to the Midwife Center for a very long time because that's actually where I had some of my babies. But I want to make sure that I give you the correct address. Yeah. So I am looking it up right now. So our big 10th anniversary celebration, which will include really good food catered by Black women in our community. Amen to that. Amen. will take place on Sunday, August the 25th from 1 to 6 p.m. at the Midwife Center for Birth and Women's Health, which is in the, uh, in the um, Strip District. The address is 2831 Penn Avenue. The zip is 15222. So we do have people that are registering, <clears throat> excuse me, so we can have a general idea how many folks are coming, but you can call me directly and then I can send you the link because it is a Google form we want folks to fill out. We will have good food. We will have music. We will have pictures. We want people, if they are comfortable, they can sign and say we're okay with having pictures taken. We're going to have some crafts for the kids and we're also going to have face painting. Oh, from good. the amazing Beanie Paints that has been rocking with us for at least the past eight years. We love it. We love supporting Black women businesses. So that's who you're going to see showcase. You'll also get to meet my family, who I have, you know, really appreciated because they understand mom is busy. There are certain hours when my kids would be like, we come into the meeting too, so we can support you. 
And so my family will be providing the music. My family are accomplished drummers. So we'll do a little bit of Zumba, right? So I'll show you some of my Zumba dance moves. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And we didn't want it to go too late because we know the kids are back to school and starting next week. So we didn't want to keep you out too late, but we wanted you to feel free to come and celebrate with us. We'll have some prizes and some other good stuff for everybody to enjoy. So wonderful family friendly event. It sounds amazing. It sounds like it's going to be a great event. I'm sure the kids are going to enjoy themselves with Zumba and face painting and, and photos and also just an opportunity to have everyone come together that you've um, been able to help heal and, and protect and promote breastfeeding over the past 10 years. I'm excited. We're going to have a nice slideshow of pictures. We got dozens of pictures for the last 10 years. So we'll be sharing that and we're going to be honoring some folks that sadly are no longer with us that were a part of the circle. So we really want to say thank you to those women for being a part of our, our circle and that we want to bless their families as well. Absolutely. It sounds like it's going to be a beautiful event. Um, and I, I really thank you for taking the time out to meet with us. And I, I also want to thank you for all that you do um, as far as with Healthy Start and with our, 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 our staff members, our peer support specialists. You do so much with the training and, and providing support. Like you, you just give out your number to anybody. So we're really appreciative of how accessible you've made yourself and also how you've um, created spaces for women to to grow and, and be able to promote their breastfeeding journey and also give back to the community. Yes, and, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't go by name of the other leadership team. So we have Kirsten, we have Leah, we have Lita, we have Ayana, right? So we cannot forget these other folks who are a part of the leadership team. Absolutely. And we we would not be here if we didn't have folks that say, yes, I want to step up and I want to support the leadership. So thank you to all of them and all of the members that have been a part of the breastfeeding circle that have their babies and they move on to other things. They get pregnant again. They come back, say, I'm coming back and I'm bringing a friend. Like we so appreciate that. Absolutely. I thank you again for joining me tonight. And I thank everyone for joining us. This was also a, a great conversation, great information. And this, um, extend my gratitude for you and all that PBBC does. Um, to our viewers, we will be holding these discussions once a month. And we look forward to seeing you at our next episode. For lactation support, please call us at Latchline, which is simply 412-545-2022. And press option one. And for those who are interested with connecting with PBVC, feel free to check out their website or give Ngazi a call. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody.